untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today I'm taking a look at a very spicy 5-color artifact and enchantment reanimator deck of sorts, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, the deck features the full playset of the Kami War, a 6-mana 5-color enchantment that on Chapter 1 will exile target non land permanent and opponent controls, then on Chapter 2 returns up to one author target non land permanent to its owner's hand, and then each opponent discards a card, especially effective if the opponent is empty-handed, because then we can make them discard card whatever we just bounced, and finally transforms into a 6-6 Flying Trampler that whenever it attacks makes the opponent choose a non-land card in our graveyard to return to our hand, and then it gets additional power equal to its mana value. So a very powerful card if we can cast it, but being 6 mana and 5 colors is quite the hurdle to overcome. Then we also have the full playset of Awaking the Trolls as another 6 mana saga. This is an old school saga, so on chapter 1 we get to destroy target land. On chapter 2 we can put target land card from any graveyard onto the battlefield under our control, including the one we just destroyed. And finally we get to choose target opponents. If they control fewer lands than us, we get to make a number of 4-4 green troll warrior creature tokens with trample equal to the difference. And since we're ramping, destroying the opponent's lands, and putting additional lands into play, that number is going to be quite significant. So these are the two big finishers that we're trying to get into play, but besides casting them, we can actually bring them back from our graveyard thanks to Brilliant Restoration, a 7 mana sorcery returning all artifact and enchantment cards from our graveyard to the battlefield, and almost every non-land card in our deck is either an artifact or enchantment that Restoration can get back, including our expensive sagas, as well as some of our channel creatures from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty that have early utility, like Twinshot Sniper and Sky Turtle, that are still artifacts or enchantments that we can later get back with our restoration. And then of course we also have a few discard outlets built into the deck to help us discard the Kami War and Waking the Trolls among other cards to maybe get them back with restoration while ramping or making treasure tokens to help us cast restoration in the first place because 4 white mana is not that easy to support in a 5 color deck. So that's our general game plan. Let's take a look at the rest of our deck, starting out with some of our early channel cards, including three copies of Twinshot Sniper, usually a 4 mana 2 3 with reach that can deal 2 damage to any target when it enters. It's an artifact creature, so it counts for restoration, and we can also channel it for just 1 and a red to deal 2 damage to any target, so it can be used as early removal to later get it back. And then we've got our three copies of Colossal Sky Turtle, an enchantment creature, a 7 mana 6 5 flyer with Ward 2, but we can channel it for 1 and a blue to return a creature to its owner's hand, or channel it for 2 and a green to return any card from our graveyard to our hand, so that can maybe get back one of our powerful cards, including Brilliant Restoration if it maybe got countered or discarded. And then at 3 mana we've got another channel creature with Greater Tanuki, a 6-5 enchantment creature with Trample, can channel for 2 and a green to search our library for a basic land card to put onto the battlefield tapped, so it can help us ramp and potentially fix our mana. And all these channel abilities of course we can use at instant speed, and since they're abilities and not spells, they're also difficult for the opponent to counter. Then we have some discard outlets, including the full playset of Fable of the Mirror Breaker, which is also an enchantment saga that Restoration can get back, and on chapter 1 it creates a 2-2 goblin token that when it attacks makes a treasure token, very helpful for fixing our mana and ramping into our expensive spells. Then on chapter 2 we may discard up to 2 cards if we do draw that many cards, so that's our discard outlet to maybe get Waking the Trolls and the Kami War into our graveyard to get back with the Restoration and finally transforms into Reflection of Kiki-Jiki, a 2-2 enchantment creature that can pay 1 mana and tap to create a token that's a copy of another target non-legendary creature we control, except it has haste and is sacrificed at the beginning of the next end step, so this can even copy some of our powerful creatures, like our 6-6 Flying Trampler, which also greatly benefits from attacking right away with haste to get the attack trigger and return a card from our graveyard back to our hand, so great synergy there, as well as the various expensive channel creatures. Then we've got two copies of the Celestus, which besides ramping and fixing our mana, also lets us draw, discard and gain a life whenever it switches between day and night, 
and our various channel cards are very good at enabling the day and night cycle as we can simply pass a turn and use our channel abilities at instant speed and then we've got a full play set of unexpected windfall which makes us discard a card to draw two and to generate two treasure tokens so that's another great way of potentially helping us cast an early brilliant restoration and it also helps fix our mana because four white mana in a five color deck is not always easy to achieve and then finally we've got three copies of Doomscar as a nice sweeper to destroy all creatures because our deck can be a little bit slow to get going and we only really have Sky Turtle and Sniper as early interaction which may not be enough. And then a mana base is pretty complicated as we are a five color deck trying to cast a quadruple white spell so lots of dual lands as you can imagine and a few basic lands to search up with our greater Tanuki. So that's our deck now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play, and hand looks keepable. Would love to find a discard outlet. And then turn two, we could channel turtle as interaction. Turn three, Tanuki probably gets red mana or white mana. Do have two planes in the deck, so do have a second one to potentially search up. Opponent on blue-red. So let's get that white mana in play, I guess, for now. If it's a mill deck, we're not too upset because that's generally where you want to be as a restoration deck. Opponent's got duress, can make me discard one of my sagas, which could actually help us out if we find restoration at some point. Can always use Sky Turtle to get back whatever they made us discard. So opponent on a blue-black control deck, it seems. Not exactly the ideal matchup. Let's get the Celestis in play now while they cannot counter it as easily. Whereas Tanuki is a lot harder for the opponent to interact with. Looks like Grixis control. Celestis triggers. And there's Restoration, although have to imagine that it's not going to resolve very easily. Could still be worth it to discard Kami War, try and cast Restoration, and then if it doesn't work, Sky Turtle it back to try a second time. Might be worth a shot. Another Tanuki. So I can channel, and then next turn, potentially if we draw lands, already go for restoration. Opponent's not doing much, so they're probably sitting on a few counter spells. And then, do I need extra white mana? I do. Although getting red mana would also be nice in case we draw an expected windfall, or if something bad happens to Celestis. Alright, there's my red mana, so yeah, can go for it. I think it's fine to get this countered now, while the opponent could also cast Memory Deluge, which otherwise lets them pull ahead and find more interaction. And then hope that Sky Turtle getting back restoration works out. Alright, opponent's got a negate, so it seems like they had a few different options to choose from. Which does not bode well for us. Magma Opus discarded, okay. And Leer to rebuy spells, but now our spells are uncounterable. So the rest is not going to be able to take Sky Turtle, and then next turn I'll be able to hopefully get back Restoration and cast it. And then am I better off keeping the land or the Tanuki? Cannot cast Tanuki and Sky Turtle. So maybe better off keeping the basic in my deck, or do we want to thin it out? Yeah, I guess we can thin out the deck. Alright, play this, and then I still cannot play Tanuki and Sky Turtle. Celestis triggers once again. Land can go. And hope they don't mess with our graveyard here. Take three. Sky Turtle. Get back Restoration. And Tanuki can find another land. And we'll go for Mountain, I believe. Alright, let's go for Restoration. 
Attempt number two. Uncounterable thanks to Leer. Unless they've got a bounce spell to bounce their own Leer. Which they do. Alright, fair enough. The old fading hope trick. That's something they tried to address with the uh, alchemy version of Leer. So we're still down to unexpected windfall, which can maybe dig towards another sky turtle or restoration. Celestus finds waking the trolls. That's not bad. Opponent's got, let's see, seven lands. I have eight right now. Is that better than maybe uh, going for unexpected windfall to dig towards another restoration? If I windfall right now, I would have enough mana for restoration. So maybe I keep windfall actually. And try and dream big. Alright, I guess we got our Waking the Trolls anyway. And do I want to use my treasure to cast it? I guess one treasure's okay to maybe keep this to discard to Celestus. Although I guess Waking the Trolls is a type of card that wants us to be playing out as many lands as possible. And our opponents get triple blue, lots of black and triple red it seems. Not sure what's more problematic. Probably get rid of their blue-red land. And uh, we'll pass it back. So they're gonna struggle to cast Magma Opus. Bang Buster can draw. Take three. Celestus triggers. Discard another Celestus. And get a land back. And then we can activate Celestus. See what we pick up. Another Restoration, perfect. And have just enough mana to cast it. And they don't have enough mana to do the Fading Hope counter trick. Alright, that worked. Choose the untapped Celestis. Exile, probably Bank Buster here over Leer. Don't know if it matters, but I guess we'll go for Bank Buster. And then we'll destroy some blue mana. Because if we go for Leer, they could have bounced it with Fading Hope. Alright. Opponent might have some sort of sweeper. But that still leaves triple waking the trolls, which I don't really see them beating here. Celestis Triggers has been an all-star this game. Doomscar, not going to be necessary. Leer can go... Get a couple lanes back. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand is a little slow to get going, but Tanuki can find red for Sniper and Waking the Trolls. I'll try it. Have our white mana sorted at least. If we're up against mono white aggro, we're gonna have to find red mana pretty soon. Alright, we did, so we can at least sniper on two now. And Thalia, pretty effective against our strategy, although channel gets around it at least, and uh, sniper, a nice answer to it. Opponent's gonna attack for two. Yeah, probably fine to kill Thalia here. 
And then maybe next turn I can Fable while there's no Thalia out to make a blocker as well, since ramping with Tanuki does not speed up casting Waking the Trolls by turn. Could get my blue mana for Sky Turtle, but we can also maybe discard and draw with Fable to find additional colors. Portable Hole exiles my token, fair enough. with a Kami War. So not really close to casting the Kami War since I'm missing both black and blue mana. So maybe that's fine to discard, although then again Waking the Trolls is probably not very impactful in this matchup as it's pretty slow to generate a board advantage. So that might also be fine to discard, although then again our opponent's stuck on two. So Tanuki lets me play Waking the Trolls next turn, which could set them back even further. So I think we'll kind of split the difference here, get rid of one expensive card and a land. Okay, so now I've got my blue mana to potentially Sky Turtle. But most likely still going for Tanuki, so we can wake the trolls. Take four. We'll get an additional 2-2 blocker. Opponent is just boasting, but they did have a third land. Okay, so do I go for Swamp in case of a Kami War, or Plains in case of a Restoration? Already have triple whites, and Waking the Trolls can get an extra Plains out of the graveyard, so I think we go for Swamp. And then now we've got a bit of interaction with Sky Turtle to buy time. Brutal Cathar exiles Reflections. So if we deal with the Cathar, that will reset the saga starting on Chapter 1. Get their cave, which is better than a Plains most likely. And then Doomscar seems nice. Next turn, get a whole bunch of trolls. And back to back waking the trolls is going to be quite devastating. Discard. Not even sure what. I guess Windfall we cannot cast right now. Maybe one Sky Turtle can go. Wouldn't mind finding Brilliant Restoration, but uh, for now we can wake the trolls, make our double reds, and we can bounce Adeline. And that should be good enough. No restoration in the graveyard to get back. Hit for two, make a treasure. Alright, Brutal Cathar gets rid of a troll. Fighting a good fight. Can go for another Saga, maybe activate their creature lands. And our opponent finally throws in the towel. Alright, well, waking the trolls pretty effective against an opponent who's stuck on lands. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got our restoration. Celestus and Tanuki for ramp. So yeah, all we're missing is some expensive cards to discard to our second chapter of Fable. And we already have one channel creature we can discard early at least. And then we're on the hunt for more white mana as well. Okay, another Tanuki is not bad. This is fine on blue. And then turn three we've got a couple options, but I'm liking Fable. Because we can maybe connect with a token to make a treasure. And now we can loot away Waking the Trolls, potentially. Although hard casting it also an option. Opponent seems to be a more controlling strategy. So we should have time to deploy our more expensive cards. Opponent is in the Jeskai control, maybe a Hinata deck. 
Sir Token is unlikely to survive. It's going to be a Prismari command to take care of it and make a treasure. And then Twinshot Sniper is an easy discard. And then I think we're hard casting Waking the Trolls. So maybe discard one Tanuki. Since I just want to hit my land drops naturally as well. And if I play Celestus, still have two mana left, so I could maybe snipe or something. Still seems better to play this now, while they cannot counter it. Whereas Tanuki is much harder for them to interact with. Even though Prismari Command points towards them having ways to destroy artifacts. Let's see if they have Hinata. It's going to be a mana form Hellkite. 4-4, four, four, survives Twinshot Sniper. So... Yeah, we'll uh, untap. Luckily found our land. So I get to wake the trolls, destroy Deserted Beach. And the Hellkite could do some damage now. Getting back Deserted Beach also gives us more white mana, which is helpful for restoration, so it does double duty. And if we can get back two snipers at once, we can take out the Hellkite. Probably want to wait until we uh, put Waking of the Trolls in the graveyard to then Restoration and get it back. A Braid destroys Reflection. Could have also destroyed Celestus, so happy with that outcome. Take six. And get back Deserted Beach. Now I could also hard cast Tanuki. How much mana are we working with? Seven, so not enough mana for channel plus restoration. Yeah, I guess hard cast Tanuki is reasonable. Could also hard cast Twinshot just to chump. That's kind of the safest play to make sure we don't die to this Hellkite somehow. And then by chumping. I can also put it in the graveyard to get back. And hope there's no counter spell. Could also activate Celestus instead of channeling Tanuki. Is that better? It's about the same. But uh, I guess we have quadruple white even if Celestus dies, so sure, maybe it's better to activate this. And discard Tanuki. Okay, well, if we can dodge a counterspell, we're in great shape. So hopefully they tap out for something like a Goldspan Dragon. Alright, another mana from Hellkite works. Next turn, make a bunch of trolls. Which I guess was one of the advantages of using Tanuki over Celestus is getting an extra land, which also represents an extra troll. So I guess they could still have a negate here, which would be painful. Only get two trolls. Restoration. All right, that worked. Destroy their land. Take out a Hellkite. Opponent has a Valorous Stance to protect it, which also makes a pair of 2-2 dragons. Okay. Those disappear end of turn, and we still have a pair of 2-3 reach snipers to double block a Hellkite at least. And then copying a twin shot with the transformed Fable could also be fun, but the game's probably not gonna go that long. Alright, a Braid destroys Sniper, so that can get an attack in. 
but our opponent's at 18, so they're just gonna take too much damage on the way back. Awesome, so our game plan worked out, managed to dodge a counter spell, and Waking the Trolls also helping out with getting our white mana sorted. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, this seems like a keepable hand, hopefully not up against a very aggressive deck, since we're not interacting much in the early game. Probably start with the white mana early. This is most likely going to be green. Now we have to decide between blue mana for Sky Turtle or green for Tanuki, which is probably going to be the pick, but we can postpone the decision by another turn. Opponent on mono green aggro, so not our favorite matchup, for sure. I think we still have to play Tanuki here, which can then maybe fix for blue as we take three. Now we do have a Windfall in hand, so discarding Kami War, and then maybe going for Restoration could be powerful. Troll something we definitely want to bounce. So I'll get the blue mana, even though that might make it more difficult to cast our quadruple white spell. Okay, so make sure to play the white mana now. And then I could Sky Turtle bounce the troll before it gets a chance to attack. Probably want to bounce it now in case they have protection. And then I can still Tanuki to develop my mana and get a planes. And then I guess we can just hard cast Kami War since we have all the required colors. So, might save the Windfall for later. Opponent replays Troll. And... White mana it is. Fable could be useful. But for now, probably Kami War. Keep land in hand to maybe discard to Windfall. Or I can play it so I can... Double spell more easily, which is probably fine. Alright, no protection, that's good. So yeah, an early Kami War could help stabilize us. Next turn we can bounce something, make them discard. And then play Fable, keep up Windfall, which I can cast, or I could Windfall first, on the off chance that we find some useful interaction. Celestus, I could play into Fable, probably better off just playing Fable and keeping Celestus as something I can maybe discard to Chapter 2. At this point we have all the mana we need to cast Restoration. And then we'll get a nice 6-6 Flying Trampler that can also start getting stuff back from our graveyard. Putin might have an instant speed fight spell, Inscription, fair enough. And ooh, a natural growth can double their power, so that's gonna trigger pack tactics to draw. And then now we have a 6-6, six, six, which can potentially get past our Flying Trampler. So if they have a fight spell, we could just be dead. I'll discard Celestus and Pathway. Did not draw anything useful, sadly. Okay, so pretty delicate situation. Probably a hard-casting Sniper just to get an extra blocker in play. Assuming they kill my Flyer here, and then... Yeah, it's not looking great, unless we draw a restoration soon. Probably fine to play out another land. Alright, opponent goes to combats, attacks, triggers pack tactics. So I could try and go for the trade. Although... Nah, let's uh, try and jump here and see how that pans out. That opponent had the fight spell anyway. And a chariots. Well, need something good off the top here. 
the lands. All right, that's too bad. Ample opportunities to find restoration, but of course not a guarantee to draw it. And now the green deck is gonna smash our face in pretty hard. So yeah, good start, had the interaction, just lacked the finisher, and a natural growth also doing a lot of work. GG's, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a promising hand. Got some ramp and fixing into brilliant restoration. So let's get our white mana sorted. We've got untapped red in case we draw sniper, blue in case of turtle, and then prioritize playing white mana early for restoration. And then the plan is going to be probably turn three fable, and then go for Celestus to maybe get some attacks in with our 2-2 Goblin. Put in blue-white. So could go for Fable, hope there's no Jory Disruption, or we can channel Tanuki to play around it. But I think I want to try and get this in play while we can. That resolves. Could see Bounce Ball on the token. Opponent is patient. Alright, it looks like Asper Control. So, hopefully they're not playing with Farewell, the sweeper that can exile everything, including stuff in our graveyard. Because that's pretty backbreaking. Here, could maybe discard one land. And then Tanuki, since we can play Celestis. Could discard another Fable, although keeping it to maybe put more stuff in the graveyard could be useful. Probably go for Tanuki. Windfall's nice. So I could main phase Windfall to play around a counter spell. And uh, get some more red mana in play. Or I could go for Celestis, which is also nice to have long term. I guess we'll Windfall and then discard Fable. And then maybe next turn I can Restoration if it feels like the coast is clear. Now playing Waking the Trolls first might be the play. Opponent passes. Yeah, Waking the Trolls seems fine. It's sort of a must counter. And I'll still have enough mana to play Restoration next turn. Assuming we draw land. Opponent goes for Deluge, and then I want to go after their white mana, which is not only useful for Restoration, but also represents Farewell, which is uh, the key card we want to prevent from getting cast. And then the extra land from Waking comes into play untapped, so could just go for Restoration, or we can be patient, get more value, maybe get back Waking the Trolls a second time. That sounds fun. So no white mana, it's good to see. Kaito, not a huge problem. And yeah, this does look like an Asper Planeswalker deck. Okay, so next up. I can attack for two. Uh, maybe hard cast Tanuki. Does that leave enough mana to channel Sniper? It does, and then we can still hard cast Restoration next turn. Or I can channel Tanuki to get an extra land for Waking the Trolls. So let's see, play this, channel Tanuki, and channel Sniper. Yeah, that should work. And then we can kill Kaito in their upkeep before they get a chance to activate it. Opponent has a Hall of the Storm Giants, which I would love to destroy as well with uh, second waking the trolls. And we'll channel. 
And I can go for Swamp in case we need to hard cast Kami War. Celestis triggers. Celestis gets discarded. Get a whole bunch of trolls. And let's hope this restoration resolves. It does not, and it even gets exiled alongside all other copies of Restoration. That's painful. Okay. Well, we still have a bunch of trolls, although those might get swept up later. For now, I can use Reflection to copy a troll to hit for four as opposed to two. And then next turn I could copy a Tanuki to make a hasty 6-powered creature. Test of Talents, not a card you're used to seeing very often. Well, let's see if the trolls can still get there. Opponent goes digging with Deluge, trying to find white mana, I'm sure, for farewell. And there's one white source. They could also have a vanishing verse now. So another waking the trolls of the top would be our best draw. So we can keep their white mana in check. So I think I like activating Celestus main phase to dig for one. Alright, just a land sadly. So I can still play Tanuki, copy it, and then hit for, I guess, 17. So if they don't have anything, they would be dead. But I imagine they might have instant speed interaction for Tanuki if I try and copy it. That resolves. Although they did have a pretty long pause. Yeah, I could just attack with a reflection. Let's try this. If they cast Farewell, I'm gonna lose everything anyway. Alright, that worked. It's gonna be a march for zero to exile one troll. Opponent falls to two, and land Farewell is what we're expecting now. So then a Twin Shot Sniper of the top could still get there. Ooh, Memory Deluge instead, so no farewell. Maybe they're just missing the second white source, which they now played. But now at two life, they're pretty far behind. Uh, Sunset Revelry might still save them, but no, too much trample power. And Hoof managed to beat Asper Control, thanks to an early Waking the Trolls, which they couldn't counter. So yeah, overall, got to see some fun games with our Restoration deck. Of course, we would prefer to play against slower decks where we actually get to cast all our spells, especially if there's not too many counter spells involved. Against aggressive decks, we can maybe hope to get an early Doomscar to stabilize or draw the early channel creatures, and then we can stand a chance, but overall, don't expect to beat aggro decks very often. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.